David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I will be taking a look at a new limited edition pen and ink offering from Papier Plume. The pairing is called the Blues. And I find this pen to be rather fascinating for reasons that will become apparent, especially during the writing sample. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Blues, discuss what I care for and what I don't care for about the pen, I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide the aforementioned writing sample, where we will also get a closer look at the ink that is included in this bundle. Thanks go out to Papier Plume for providing this pen and ink on loan for review. On a side note, in my last review, I mentioned that I'd be doing a collaboration with another YouTube channel, and that has been posted as of a couple of days ago. If you haven't seen it, I was able to sit down with Peter from Peter Draws. Peter's channel focuses more on art and other art-related oddities, but he's also began to get interested in fountain pens, mainly in relation to art. Uh, so if you're into art and fountain pens, then his channel is a good one to follow. Uh, for this video, I brought a number of pens that he had never been exposed to and shared them with him and his audience. Uh, fair warning, it is a bit long, it's over an hour, but I was pleased with the way it turned out. Uh, it's just a nice conversation about a number of pens. And the feedback from his viewers has been very positive. I saw lots of comments from folks who said they subscribed to both channels, so thanks for that. Uh, if you would care to check this video out, I'll put a link to it in the notes below. Okay, back to the pen at hand, and this is an interesting one. Uh, Papier Plume is a fantastic retailer based out of New Orleans, Louisiana. They have their website as well as a physical location in the famous French Quarter. Uh, they've teamed up with the Heinz Pen Company to produce a pen they are calling the Blues. Uh, many of Papier Plume's offerings make reference to things of cultural importance around the New Orleans area. And the same goes for a lot of their inks. I've reviewed a number of them, but I've always appreciated it when a, a product or an ink refers to something specific as opposed to just a generic name. Uh, the gentleman behind the Heinz Pen Company is Jim Hines. He's based out of Plano, Texas, which is just north of Dallas, and Jim's been making custom pens for over 15 years. The pen arrives in this metal box. Uh, I like that the box is rather compact. It's actually something you might use and keep the pen in rather than most boxes where you just remove the pen and dispose of the packaging. Uh, I actually like the printing that's on the top of this box as well. I think it looks really sharp. It says Papier Plume, then the name of the pen, the Blues, limited edition, and then the limited edition number of the pen. This is a limited edition of 40 pens, so there's not a lot of these to be going around. And then here is the pen. This is the Blues. The body is made from a hand poured acrylic resin with mixes of grays and blacks and blues. It has a nice chatoyance with some pearlescent characteristics. Some custom acrylics, in my opinion, feel haphazardly swirled, kind of swirled for the sake of swirling. I don't feel that way about this material. It gives me the impression of intention. I like it a lot. On another quick side note, if you'd care to see how custom acrylics are made, you could check out my video with Jonathan Brooks, uh, one of the best in the business where we make acrylics and turn them into pens. And when I say we, it was like 99% Jonathan and I helped stir a little bit. Uh, in regard to this pen, let's start by taking a look at the cap. Uh, the end is flat with a rounded edge. The cap is straight and devoid of either a clip or a roll stop, and then there is a very small step down to the barrel, which tapers down very slightly, only about a millimeter and a half from beginning to end, and then on the end of the barrel it is flat. The cap unscrews and leads us to what, in my opinion, is the sizzle for this pen, which is the nib. This is an extra fine Harpoon Flex nib from Stylo Suite. Stylo Suite is a company run by a gentleman by the name of Les Sheely. He's based out of Hatfield, Pennsylvania, which is a small town a bit north of Philadelphia. Uh, at a couple of pen shows, I've sat down at Les's table and had lengthy conversations with him about his creations. Uh, he's very passionate about his custom nib creations. Uh, if you attend a show that Les is at, I recommend stopping at his table to check his products out. 
Uh, this nib starts out as a standard Yovo nib. Uh, the slit is actually extended past the breather hole. Now, this is something I appreciated. Uh, the extended slit actually bisects the E and F of this nib perfectly. Attention to detail like that is something that gets me excited. I see that and think to myself, if enough care was put into making sure that that was right, then I feel I can safely assume the level of detail is present in all the work done to customize this nib. Uh, the shoulders of this nib each have two indentations. Uh, these are present to help the nib flex a little bit easier. Uh, you get a look at how this nib performs in the writing sample, but it's one of the more pleasurable and well-performing modern flex nibs I've experienced. It is very nice. And then here is a look at the ebonite feed. With ebonite feeds, it's a little bit easier to customize them to create a wider ink trough in order to accommodate the increased flow necessary in order to keep up with this nib. Uh, as you'll see, this nib can lay down a great deal of ink. The section begins with a flare, and then it angles up slightly until you reach the threads, which aren't sharp at all. And then there's a small step up to the barrel. Um, I find this pen to be very comfortable in my hand. Uh, at 14 grams, it's very light. I mean, you could barely feel this in your hand. But the lack of weight really doesn't convey to me a lack of quality. The pen feels very well constructed, and the material is solid. Um, it's just very light. The pen is plenty long enough to use unposted, uh, but the cap does post, and it posts securely. Um, with the cap only weighing four grams, you really can't even feel that it's on here. So if you like to post your pens, this one works very well for that. There is no branding on the pen at all. I would have liked to at least seen some kind of branding on the barrel or end of cap or end of the barrel or something like that, however minimal. I can imagine uh, 50 years from now, someone posting on whatever kind of social media we have then a, uh, a picture of this pen saying they found it in their grandfather's collection and wanted help in identifying it and no one knows what it is because there's no clues. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. The price of the blues is $375. And that price includes a bottle of the matching ink that we'll take a look at here in a bit. And while I feel the price is on the high side of the value proposition, this pen does bring a lot to the table. And I understand that there was production costs for the pen and then additional expense for the custom nib, as well as including the ink. So there is value there. Um, for me, I don't have many pens of this particular size. Uh, I really like the material. And the nib, as you'll see in the writing sample, is really fun to use and performs well. I'll put a link in the notes below where you can check out this pen and ink set on the Papier Plume site. Uh, this is a very limited edition pen of 40 units, so I have a feeling that they won't be around for very long. Uh, thanks again. Go out to Papier Plume for providing this pen on loan for review. Now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Papier Plume, the Blues. And in regard to a number of other blue pens, here is what it looks like with a Pelican M805. Then here it is with a Pilot Vanishing Point. And here it is with a Panider La Grande Bellezza. And then in regard to some other blue pens, here it is with a Lamy All-Star, a Leonardo Momento Zero Blue Hawaii, and then finally an Edison Pen Company Menlo Pump Filler. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the All-Star and the Pelican M805. And then finally, the Leonardo Momento Zero. To begin with, I just wanted to give you another closer look at this nib. Uh, it is just pretty cool. I just love the indentations on the side there. Uh, the ebonite feed is cool. And then even from the underside, it just has a cool profile looking at it from the underside there as well. It's just pretty neat. And then let's see how it actually 
performs. What we have here is the papier plume. The blues. And this is technically an extra fine nib. And the ink that I'm using is also papier plume, the blues. This is what the ink bottle looks like. Uh, and I've always really liked the papier plume uh, wax uh, seal that they put on top here. And this is the blues, the accompanying ink. And then this is what it looks like. Um, it's a nice kind of denim blue that really matches the pen well. Uh, this is what it looks like in regard to Pilot Orochizuku Sukiyo. And then here's something that's others also somewhat like it was the Diatrementus Ultramarine. In going through my collection, I have almost 100 blue inks, and there's not many that are fairly close to this. So I kind of like that it's unique and fills a little bit of a, a slot for me uh, in regard to that type of color. So that's nice. I thought that I actually lay down a little bit of ink here as well, so you can get an idea of kind of what it looks like on the paper as well, as far as a broader ink sample. I will say here that the paper that I'm using here uh, is not really uh, handling this large amount of ink that well. There is a bit of feathering on here on this particular paper. Uh, but let me go ahead and get to the rest of the writing sample. And you can see just with your regular writing that it does add a lot of flair to the writing. And with very little effort, you can get a great deal of flex in here. And I found that you can pretty much push this for an extended period of time without starving this out. Finally, after a, long, a while, it starved out a little bit, but for the most part, you could be able to get a decent amount of line here and that the uh, the ink flow is very good in this nib. A lot of times with the flex nibs, especially the modern ones, they get starved very easily and then they just get a little bit finicky. But I found that this one behaves very well. Uh, in regard to just pushing it a little bit, you can see the large amount and of ink that I can get out of here and I really don't feel like I'm pushing it that hard. In regard to reverse writing, it does work. I would not flex it that way. It's not meant to do that, but it does lay down and like an extra, extra fine line with a little bit of lighter writing. And in regard to some fast writing, There's no issues whatsoever. So this is the Papier Plume, the blues. Uh, it's something that really surprised me because while I don't do a lot of calligraphy and usually use nibs of this type, uh, I found that during just using it on a regular everyday basis, it was a lot of fun uh, and it was very easy to flex it and get a little bit of uh, variation you're writing. And so if that's what you're into, then this is something that would work very, very well for you. So until next time, Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.